Hi there, my name is Emma. I'm an artist and DIYer. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my specialty is upcycling and I started on TikTok and I've been trying to share more of my upcycles here on YouTube. So for this video, I'm going to be sharing four different upcycles of trash that I found in my apartment complexes community trash bin. People sometimes leave their kind of nicer pieces of trash that people might want to take in the general room. And so I snatched four pieces this past week that I am going to upcycle in this video and give them a second life. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more DIY and upcycling content. Now let's get into the video. This first project was a plant stand that I transformed from completely rusty, decaying and falling apart into a gorgeous statement piece. I love how it turned out. Here's how I did it. When I saw this plant stand in my trash, I immediately snagged it, even though it was really rusty and pretty much completely falling apart. At first, I thought I would just treat the rust and I used a wire brush to kind of smooth all this rust away on it. However, I realized there was kind of a bigger problem with the paint chipping if I wanted to refinish it. So I tried to strip the big parts off and then I got in over my head and grabbed my paint stripper, which helped kind of soften the paint up so I could scrape it off a little bit better. And this was the finished result after I had worked. It's certainly not perfect, but I'm going to be putting some shelves on there so it doesn't have to be. In order to prep this very imperfect, I know, surface, I grabbed some primer and did a few coats of that before deciding on a color for spray paint. I ended up going with this shiny black that I thought would accent some stained glass that I'll show you how to do in a second. And then I took this upcycled sheet of plastic and laid it on top of my shelf so I could see through it to trace the size of my shelf so I could get it nice and even to create a pattern for it. So I'm cutting out my little stencil for my shelf and then I took it to a sheet of 1 fourth inch MDF, which is so nice and smooth. And I traced out two of the same shelves, one for the top and one for the bottom. And then I took it to my scroll saw and very carefully cut it out. I do have a belt sander, so I did rely on that quite a bit i'm not the best or the most accurate person at a scroll saw but i was able to kind of put it in and then sand it and then put it back in and then i'm going to paint these shelves later but first i'm going to do some faux stained glass with more of my upcycled plastic same technique as before i just traced the corners now i love this little art shape that's what drew me to it in the first place and they're not completely even on the corners so i did two separate corners and then i'll end up doing four of these two of each of the sides but for now i'm just starting with these two i line them up as you can see they're like exact opposites of each other and i just did an average of the lines that i had traced these don't have to be totally perfect i clean them up and then i made an outline of what i wanted my stained glass to do on a spare piece of paper i just kind of sketched it out well i didn't sketch it out i went straight in with sharpie as per usual <laughs> probably should have sketched it out and just made this design inspired by one from I think Tiffany's that I saw online and then I put my plastic over it and was able to trace it and then as I said they're not perfect triangles so I flipped it to the other side to make sure the shape was the same there's like one side that's a little bit longer and I traced my secondary one and as I said I ended up doing this with four of them in total and then I grabbed some black acrylic paint and a very dense brush that has very short bristles because I want everything to be consistent and I took my black paint and I just painted directly on the plastic doesn't really matter what side I also gave it an edge on every single side once those had dried you can see there's a difference between the sizes that's the paint side but I'm gonna do that painted side down so I'm gonna paint on the opposite side as I had before and here's my secret sauce I am going to take some clear acrylic paint and food coloring. That's what's gonna give us the stained glass effect and really translucent, transparent effect rather than just acrylic paint, which is pretty opaque. So I'm dabbing it on there in little chunks. Glass very often is not like a perfect solid color. So you can see there's like some texture on there and I mixed a bunch of different colors. This was just all with the primary colors. And once it had dried, I did a clear coat on both sides to make sure it didn't get messed up. 
Now let's grab our shelves and I chose this color based on the stained glass that I ended up doing and I painted it this really pretty, I think it's called copper oxide color and I only did one side just in case I ever wanna flip it to that raw wood side. Finally, I glued my fake stained glass on there I just use hot glue, E6000 would probably be ideal, but I'm currently out, I didn't do anything fancy. I just stuck it on there, but the effect is amazing. I seriously think it looks so good. I really think it does look like stained glass from far away, and I am so happy with how it turned out. I'm so happy that I left that plain MDF on the other side so I can flip the shelf, or I can paint it another color if I want a different feel for it. And that faux stained glass is my favorite technique. I do actually know how to do real stained glass and I might do some real stuff in the future. But that faux stained glass is so great if you're in a pinch. I love how this next DIY turned out. I almost left this little stand in the trash, but I decided to go back and get it and I turned it into a jewelry holder. Here's how I did it. I'm not actually 100% certain what this is. It might be like some sort of hat rack or something like that. It feels handmade, but it also feels a little dated with the choice in stain. And I'm not a huge fan of these little inserts that I was able to just kind of pull out. That's what makes it feel kind of dated for me. So I just pulled those out and actually did save them. Hopefully I'll find another project for them. And I just happened to have a piece of wood dowel left that was a perfect fit. So I compared and I. I am going to be turning this into a jewelry stand. So I did make those legs a little bit longer and I cut one and then used that one as a base to measure all of them. So I ended up cutting four that would fit right on in the jewelry stand. Once I finished cutting them, I went ahead and sanded down my edges and I also cleaned the whole thing, which I probably should have done in the first place, but I'm not using those other parts. Just, you know, it is what it is. And then I sanded the whole thing because there definitely is some sort of varnish or something on there and I wiped it down to get all the dust particles off before taking this nice beige color to paint the bottom and then the very top. I did end up having to do about three coats of this, letting it dry completely in between layers. Then I grabbed some blue tape to tape off the edges to protect them from the texture paint I'm going to use. I want to give this kind of a stone look and don't mind my blue tape job it ends up being really awful but I'm using this stone texture spray paint and so I did a few coats of that to give it kind of an interesting look and this takes a while to dry so you're going to wait an hour or two for it to dry and then I want this kind of in between little block to be gold I thought that would be a nice little pop of color because most of my jewelry is gold so I think it would accent it really well so I took my favorite favorite gold spray paint, let that dry, and then removed all of that tape. I have a lot of black accents in my room, so I took some black acrylic paint and then I just painted that whole middle base, being very, very careful as I got to the bottom part. I didn't use tape just because I'm pretty good at freehand, but you can also tape off the top and the bottom if you're not as confident. And then I took that same black paint and I painted all of my dowels, the tops and the bottoms. You can throw some wood glue in there and then just shove them in. And here is the beginning, just to remind you, and here's the finished result. It is way more modern. It definitely is functional as a jewelry stand and it matches my room perfectly. I am so, so happy with the result. I'm so glad I ended up flipping this piece. I do actually technically already have a jewelry holder, so I'm actually going to bring it into the office and use it to hold my scrunchies because I always take my hair down and put it up as I'm working and it's gonna be a nice place to keep them. This next DIY is something anyone can do. I found a super simple glass vase and I used some polymer clay to jazz it up a little bit. Here's how I did it. I started off with this super simple vase that I'm sure you could find in your local trash or at a thrift store. I took a piece of paper and measured the height because I'm going to make a little stencil. Now you can use this technique for whatever you want. I'm just doing a kind of specific shape. I'm doing these kind of little petal patterns and I'm trying to make six of them. So I folded it in half and then measured that into thirds because this is not something I wanted to freehand. I wanted it to be kind of perfect. Perfect. So I'm drawing out my little petal and then cutting it out and you can adjust it however you want. Again, you can do whatever shape going down the edge of the vase that you want to do. I grabbed some polymer clay and started warming it up between my hands and then I rolled it into a little tube shape and started rolling that out 
trying to make it kind of match the pattern that I had created and I flattened it onto the pattern and used an X-Acto knife to cut it out and then I very, very carefully lifted it up because I don't want it to be too stuck to the plastic that I'm working on after rolling it out on there. So when I lift it up, it won't kind of fall apart. So be very careful as you're moving it once it's cut out. And then I'm just going to remove the excess and I have my perfect little ribbed shape that you can try to perfect the edges by tapping them a little bit. And then I did that six different times. I tried to make sure that all of the edges were as rounded as possible and everything was as smoothed out as possible. And then once I was ready to bake, I put it on some foil and took a straight edge to make sure all of the lines were nice and flat and straight. And then I baked it at 275 for 30 minutes and this is the finished result. You can sand them down if you need to, but I'm not a perfectionist. So I grabbed some acrylic paint and started painting them, making sure I got the sides and then the very backs. My vase is clear, so I will be able to see through it, painting both sides and you might need to do a few coats. For the last two ones, I ended up wanting to mix my own colors. So I mixed some white and yellow to get a nice pale yellow. And then for the very last color, I mixed white, yellow, and some red to get a nice pale orange because I'm thinking they're all kind of colors of the rainbow or diluted pastel colors of the rainbow. And then I took some clear tape to kind of help me trace out where they're going to go and get them nice and even. And I was left with this, which was kind of ingenious because I could tape them down as I was waiting for the glue to dry. So I didn't have any E6000, so I used some crazy glue, which is not ideal in the least bit. I recommend E6000 for this, but I was able to have the tape kind of hold it in place as it dried, and I just tried to space them out as evenly as possible. The result is so pretty, and it's perfect for spring. I love how you can still enjoy the see-throughness of the vase, but it just adds a nice pop of color. This turned out so cute and this technique could be used to do a million different designs. I will definitely be using it again. This last one is a super simple fix, but it has my best upcycling hack. I found a wicker mirror that someone had painted with their own little design and I restored it to its previous glory. Here's how I did it. This mirror has definitely seen better days, but it's got a great foundation. So let's clean it up and paint it. I started by cleaning off the actual mirror and then I took some newsprint, which is like super, super cheap paper that comes in these giant pads. And I'm just going to smooth it along the inside ridge, which is going to get me the perfect shape to be able to protect my mirror as I'm spray painting it. I did cut a little bit outside of the ridge that I found and I was left with a tiny bit of gap which I fixed with just some blue tape. You can also do the whole edge in blue tape totally up to you but I just had a tiny bit of gap on one side. Now here's my secret ingredient. Rust-Oleum in the color khaki gives you the perfect color for any wicker, rattan, wood grain. It looks just like how I think it would when it was originally bought. And if you have any mistakes, you can just take some Windex and go right over those and it should come off. Or you can take a toothpick or something like that and scrape it off. But I love how it turned out. It kind of turned out exactly how I think it was supposed to be. I have gone through a million cans of that khaki spray paint. I love the color. It's really nice if you have like a bunch of different baskets that you want to make cohesive or if you have a project like that one back there that just needs kind of that rattan or wicker look. I think it always turns out so, so well and I'm always so surprised at how well it turns out. That is it for all of my upcycles. I hope you enjoyed. If you ever try any of my DIYs or upcycles, make sure you send me a photo, tag me, make sure to follow me on here here, Instagram, TikTok. Thank you so, so much for watching and happy making.